Hey tubers, so geez, thanks thanks for all the all the good stuff on that last video I did. Unfortunately, this is not going to be one of those videos. But no, no fast forward sections or or um, music interludes. What I got happening is I'm trying to get all these processed up. I'm not videoing much of this process because it's horrendously boring. Um, basically, where I'm at is I got three packs done. Um, I'm just putting some charge into each one, at the, just individually at the moment. I got my cardboard ready there to put in between, so I don't have another flaming white mess. Um, obviously, that's my big pack. I'm looking forward to running that test. Also, my little rig here. So, I'm, what, what, what I do is I, I glue down each of the. And you can't find it when you want. You can't even read it. That's what's left in my little tube. And here it is down here. Look at this polyurethane adhesive. It's called Sikaflex, among other names. But that's the stuff that I'm actually sticking the bus bars down with. And then I just put a whole heap of weight on it. Now I'll leave it like that for about half an hour. And um, I got the bus bars up this end. Now one of the things I've noticed with these bus bars, and I didn't notice at the time because I was so consumed with making the bloody video, is it's almost impossible to see. Uh, uh, this on, on the right hand side, the, the leg curves, and of course, you know, the first one I pick up's not curving. Actually, they curve outwards. There we go. Look at the end. And I didn't even notice this when I was building the packs. So if we put these down here, the bloody things curve out. Now I know this happened last time when I was cutting it up, but nowhere near to this extent. So I've got a I've got a fair bit of work to do. I've got to fix up these um, copper bus bars. It, it, it's a little annoying, I must admit, but it's, you know, it's part of the process and live and learn. And I, like I said, I was trying to make the video. So what do you, what do you do? You, you move forward, you fix it and you move forward. I'm also almost out of this tape too. So I've got to order some more. So that might put my project back a little bit, but we're, we're going to get around that. Basically, so if I was to do this project again, now this, this doesn't take into account all the guys just doing a one kilowatt or two kilowatt hour pack. You need the, you need the heavier bus bar, right? But if I had have known that I was going this size when I first started, I would have just used, um, uh, what's that stuff off Ali? I'll put it here, off Ali Barber or whatever. Uh, nickel strip. It's straight. I can cut it with a pair of and I don't need the load on it. It's not going to hurt using the nickel strip across these sorts of things. Maybe I'd have to double it up, but it would have been easier, better, and faster, and maybe even cheaper than going this way. So maybe that's for the people out there that are planning to go large. Consider what your end game is, not what the current game is. Maybe you could do the first pack with these and then subsequent packs with smaller. Um, I don't know if that'll work for everybody, but I think, to be honest, it certainly would have worked for me. So I want to get stuck back into doing this. Um, I also have another problem with... Uh, I'm, I'm getting really sore eyes. Now, I've got me, me exhaust vent, and we all know me exhaust vent. It works perfectly well. But it doesn't suck all of the um, fumes. It gets a good 60% of them, I think. You know, and I've got to keep moving got to keep moving the pack underneath that vent or move the vent and it you know if you forget you get a face full of fumes and my eyes are getting sore I don't know if my eyes are getting sore from concentrating on trying to hold this little tiny wire in place or it's because of the fumes but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take me Ryobi Ryobi fan I'm just gonna whack it here and I'm gonna build out a bezel and I'm gonna attach the bezel to this bit here so I'll run the fan up top and this fan and it should suck all of the fumes away and I think that'll work much better okay so that could be argued that's not the prettiest thing in the world but it is actually leaking air <laughs> I have to fix that but it's it's not so bad. It should be uh, it should be okay. It should be a lot better than not having it at all. So let's um, I can really feel a draft there, which is what you need, and it's only on low. Let's put it on high. Oh, you can really feel that sucking now. And of course, I got the fan turned on up top as well, so it's pushing and pulling, so to speak. Right, yeah. 
let's um, get some solar out and see what it does. She's a little bit noisy, you're going to get some fan noise. As a side note, I've gone through um, two uh, 500 grams. Focus. There we go, 500 gram. Um, Thanks, so that's a kilo of uh, solder I've gone through so far. Right, let's um, take all the weights off this. It gets all over the bottom of it. It's actually all over my bench and everything as well. If you have a look down here, the downside to doing this is it goes everywhere. But I'd rather it go everywhere and be stuck down nice and firmly than not at all. Well, that is somewhat disappointing. That's actually very disappointing. I'm going to try and do this with one hand. And as you can see, all the smoke is just spinning around with the turbulence. Sure, some of it's getting sucked up, but nowhere near enough. I wonder if we do it on low. Less turbulence. No, that's a failure. Kids don't try this at home. It doesn't work. Alrighty, back to the drawing board. I'll see you on the next one. Tubers. <laughs>